Oh man, we have a special one tonight. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Oh man, I have a lot of names to introduce you by, but we have Chad Lensman tonight, the current superintendent of Graham Local Schools. Is that or St. Paris or is it Graham Local Schools? What is Graham Local? What is the actual name of the school? It's, it's Graham Local. St. Paris is is our uh, is our city there. So okay. we're we're St. Paris, but we're Graham Local. Okay. Watts, Watts calling it a city. I don't know if I don't know if you're really quite a city. I'm not gonna lie to you there. Uh yeah, we're uh we're we're more of a village. But there you uh, go. yeah, I was St. Saying... Paris great little area surrounded by tons of cornfields. Um, you know, born and raised here, so I wouldn't wouldn't have it any other way. Okay. So how long have you been the superintendent for uh, for Graham Local? Uh, this is my second full year superintendent. This is my 10th with the district. Okay. Uh, I spent some time as the elementary. Yeah. Elementary, middle, and then curriculum while I was here. Okay. Were you ever uh, at Urbana City Schools? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I taught first and third grade at, at Urbana City. Okay. So it's been, it's all been Sh Champaign County, though. Every the place that you've been has been Champaign County, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep, been Champaign County my entire teaching career. Uh, got back into administration at Graham and kind of worked my way up from there. Okay, so you are uh, what are you, are you a two thousand or two thousand one Graham Falcon uh, graduate of, of St. Paris Graham High School? Two thousand, proud 2000. proud two thousand grad of uh, Graham High School. How many kids were in a graduating class at Graham in two thousand, Chad? Uh, we would we would between one thirty and one fifty. Um, what are you guys? You know, we'd have now? some classes up in one eighty. Uh, we're still closer to one thirty, but we're we're trending down in our elementary around one hundred per class per grade oh, level. Wow. So there could yeah. be a potential division change for for Graham. You guys could actually move down into the smaller division in Division Three in Ohio. Is that a possibility? Oh, I think it's a it's a really good possibility in the future. Um, I don't know if it'll be in the next or this year's reclassification, but I think in the future it's a distinct possibility. I think we were about 15 boys away this last time. Um, you know, we have we have our lowest grade uh, number is fifth grade right now. We have about 90 kids in that grade level. Okay, so was your sophomore year the last year that Ron McCunn was the head coach at, at Graham? Uh, no, uh, coach McCunn was, it was my senior year was, it was his last year. That was his last year. So I was, people don't know legendary coach for, for the Graham Falcons. Um, your guys, a state championship run actually in 1998. So he was the head coach in 82 and 98 when they won those first two titles, right? Correct. Correct. Coach McCunn was a great man. That's for sure. He kind of, uh, he started the ship along with coach Jordan, uh, we had Derns about that time as well. So, I mean, lots of great coaches I had that I was able to to be around and learn from growing up. Also kind of an infamous uh, tag, the 2000 team did not win, right? Yeah, we were uh, we were the last before the the start of this run. I think we 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 were fifth my senior year. So you were fifth and you qualified. Fifth at Ironman and fifth at state. Yeah. And yeah. You were, yeah. You were state qualified. Yep, I qualified. Okay. Yeah, stay, stay qualified for Graham. Okay, so now you've got these guys, right? And then you go off and you go to Kent State, right? You go, and uh, how many years did you wrestle at Kent? Three? Three, yep, three. Okay, so you go and you do D1 college wrestling for three years, okay? And then in there, there's this really weird part in your life, okay? So you stop going to Kent State in what year? Uh, 2004, 2005, right around there. 2000, I think it was 2005. Okay. Uh, cause that, that was when the accident happened. Okay. So that leads us to, so why do you leave Kent state? Why do you like not graduate from Kent state? You leave Kent state and you, what do you go home and you do, do you, where you're far? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, I was, I was working construction with Mark. Um, you know, my cousin Mark at the time. So, uh, going back to, you know, I wanted to be a teacher at the time. So I was coming back home and just 
kind of resetting everything, um, you know, make, seeing if, you know, I wanted to change the direction that I was doing. Um, so I was working construction, figuring out what my next step was that, that I was going to do. I was re-enrolled back into Urbana University at the time uh, to go be a, a teacher, uh, which is ironic considering what, what I do now, you know, I went from, you know, business to education. Um, but it took just a few more things that, that had to happen that, that set my life in the direction it is now and something that, you know, has changed me for the better. Well, okay. So just, just to break down any suspense, most people would not say that change for the better comes from getting hit by a locomotive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. So in, in 2005, April, 2005, um, I was in a pretty severe car train accident, um, gave me about a 5% chance to live. Um, I was, I was flown to Miami Valley hospital. I spent over a hundred days there, um, you know, just flipped my world upside down. Um, really bad burns. I ended up losing my leg, uh, that following February, um, you know, just, it, you know, it, it sounds weird to say something like that can change you, but it did. I mean, it makes you, you know, you don't take for granted anything, you know, coming back from that, um, you know, changed my, changed my attitude moving forward. It changed, it changed pretty much everything, my direction, what I wanted to do, who I was, um, you know, I was still the same person deep down, but it, you know, it really, it provided me a, a focus moving forward. You know, I it really made me stronger, you know, I had a little bit less of me as a body, but it made me stronger moving forward. So you lost your leg from about just below the knee down. So you have no shin or foot. And what, what which leg is it, Chad? Uh, it's my left leg, but it's it goes down about the 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 bottom of my calf on my left leg. So it's really yeah, just a high much. ankle. Um, you know, yeah. So it's and I was fortunate because they. Uh, they tried to save it for a pretty long time, and that's why I was able to keep so much because the burns were so bad. Um, so I had skin grafts. They tried to save it, and it just it just wasn't healing right. So finally, we just said take it off. Um, you know, technology was was so much better at the time. You know, and, and upcoming that I was going to be able to move, and it, it was it was the best decision I could make. You know, moving forward. You know, there's still days of of having a prosthetic that is hard or you're hurting or, you know, things like that, but it's, it's better than what I would have been dealing with. Uh, if I would have kept my leg, I didn't have any toes left, um, just cause the burns were so severe. It was, uh, it was just really a, a really tough decision, but the right one we tried, you know, since we saved it, we tried to save it and let me get my mind right. Um, for when we finally did have to take it off. So you fought to keep it. What was that accident in, in March? April. April, April 2005. I was at the tournament April. champions with my nephew Ian and he was in the blood round to place and he's just molly whopping some dude. And, uh, ha as it would be, he stops wrestling. He, you know, he does this thing where he, you know, I don't know. It doesn't complete a match. He's been known to do that. Anyhow. Um, the guy he's beating the guy by 10 points. He's about to, it was a 12 point tack ball stops wrestling. The guy hips over him. Like chin whip, whips over, hips over him and pins him. So he's out of the tournament. Well, I opened my phone. I remember opening my phone and I had all these voicemails. Nick Brenner, your cousin Mark, Noel, all these people. The, and I was like, oh, this isn't good. And it was in the Columbus Convention Center. And then I was over at Miami Valley by the time he got there. And I don't think they would let us in or anything. And, um, I kept making trips back and forth there. And then when you started getting to this 5% chance, you bloated. it. You started retaining all your, I don't think you're, I think your kidney yeah. and your was to shut down. And I remember you were in a bed and a, yeah. in a, in a, in a drug induced coma. Right. And I remember they were like, Hey, yeah. there's one thing we can do for the guy. One thing we're going to flip him on his, on his face. And what happened when they yeah, put me in the prone position? What happened? I started to breathe. I started to breathe. So they called everybody in, you know, to say, you know, it was a couple of times they had to call everybody in to say, Hey, I think this is, it's, he's not going to make it. You know, this is, this is the last time. Why don't you come in? Cause you're probably gonna have to say goodbye. And then um, they said, we'll give you, we got one more thing we can do. Cause I couldn't breathe. The pneumonia was, was setting in from, from the smoke still um, from the fire. And they said, we got, we got one of the nurses there said, hey, we have one more thing we can try. We'll flip them over in the prone position. Um, and, you know, all of a sudden my, my vitals started picking back up and, 
you know, it was, it was onward and upward from there. You know, it was a, a life-saving measure that, that happened, uh, you know, and it was a nurse that, that made the call, you know, it's, it is another ironic thing on, you know, I'm now married to an RN at the same time. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff moving forward. How, how bloated did you get with, you were like over 200 pounds just bloated with fluids, weren't you? Oh yeah. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Wild. So I went up to, uh, I was over 200. Yeah. I was over 200 pounds. And then I think when, when I couldn't eat, when I had my jaw wired shut and everything and I couldn't eat and I had a feeding tube, I think I, I got down to like, like what in the one twenties again, you know, oh, something God, that are even maybe in the one, one team. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, it was crazy. God. Dude, the face flip, the prone position flip. And I remember being like, this is it. This dude's gone. He's gone. When You know, this is 2005. Yeah. It's over. This guy, April 2005, you know, what were you, 20, 22, 23 at that point? 23. 23. So you're 23. Now, I just want to point this out. You know, most people in their young 20s, when they have a traumatic thing happen to them, right, and even if they survive how you survived and they did this miracle flip you on your, your stomach and you – all the fluids started draining your vitals. You could breathe, all these things, right? Most people don't recover from that like the way you've recovered. What you've done is like a 0.001% recovery, Chad. It's like, it's amazing. I love to tell people about it. It's, I love hearing your story because it, it's as real as it gets. But most people, you know, as you know, we have we have a, 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 a opiate opioid crisis in America, right? And with all the injuries you've had, you've had your face. Yeah reconstructed jaw wired shut you've had your leg amputated amputated below the calf i mean you had a i want to say that you had like a severed liver uh, uh which what, what was severed your yeah liver? lacerated liver lacerated liver, liver. lacerated liver I, I remember from you know then and i remember I'm like this dude is totally screwed the rest of his life right it turns out you aren't totally yeah. screwed the rest of your life <laughs> it's an it's an it's a miracle and then you weren't, you were not a college grad yet. That's the other wild thing. So you had the wherewithal no. to no. get off your ass and you go back and you don't go to Urbana. You go to Kent state, right? You go back to Kent state and, li and live I yeah. remember coming up and we were like, yeah, what's up? Let's go. We were going out or something. And it was like, you're quasi normal. Yeah. It was crazy. Well, how do you do Absolutely. that? Does it come you know, to that? It was how do you do that? You know, it's, you know, you have those conversations with everybody. They're like, you know what? I could never do what you've done or something like that. I'm always like, you've never been in that position. You know, you've never been put in a situation like that. But I do, you know, a lot of the things that we, we talk about all the time with wrestling and things like that, you know, I'm telling you that, you know, that is what gave me the drive to, to come back, you know, because you have so much discipline, you know, when you've wrestled for so long in your life and, you know, when the tough things, you know, are stacked against you or coming up or you're grinding in the second or third practice, or, you know, you're cutting that last 10 pounds to get down, you know, and, and you push through the pain and the hurt, you know, because you love something so much. I think, I mean, that's a major part of it. And on the other side of this too, I had people like you, people like Mark, um, my family was around, you know, and you had this constant support of nobody was going to let you take no or quit, um, you know, wanted to keep pushing you, you know, and I wanted to, you know, something happened for a reason in that accident. I, you know, I know God did something, you know, made sure I was here for a specific reason to go back and do something, you know, to, to inspire somebody else to help kids. Um, I knew it was something at the time. I didn't know exactly what it would be. But to make it through something like that, like I'm still like when I went back to visit the hospital, you know, just to check back in, I'm still that story they tell of like who survived, you know, of the one guy, you know, I had when I came in there, they said I had gray matter coming out my ears. So literally like brain, you know, coming out, you know, of something that nobody should ever make it through, you know, in, in any reason, you know, and so it's. You know, if somebody's, you know, you get a chance like that to move forward and do something, you know, that was a major part of it, you know, and that, you know, you were given a second chance and, you know, I, I loved Kent. I wanted to make sure I got back there and I graduated. I'm proud, proud to be a Kent State grad. Uh, it's something I'll always be proud of. I love that university. Um, you know, that means, that means uh, the world to me to be able to graduate from there. I've got lifelong friends like you, um, you know, and a, and a whole group of people that, 
you know, will always be there for me that, that remember the times when I had two legs and, uh, was just a, just a country boy from Champaign County. And, uh, you know, that I've, that I've worked my way up to where I am now, you know, really still being that same person and, you know, still being grounded, uh, remembering back from where I was from and, you know, how far I've actually come, you know, and if I can inspire just a few people to keep doing what they're doing and pushing forward, that's, that's enough for me knowing what I'm doing, you know, knowing I'm, I'm, I came back for a good reason. Well, the other wild thing is, you know, you bring up wrestling practices and cutting weight and two, three practices in a day. Dude, none of that compares to what happened to you in Miami Valley Hospital. None of it. In my opinion, like none of it. Like I understand it. Prepare, I get all that stuff. I understand that like eating peanut butter and jelly and, the yeah. and running and run, working 12 weeks of camp sucks real bad. And eating <laughs> and it sucks real bad. And then Jim Jordan coming and kicking your ass sucks real bad. And then Jeff Jordan kicking your ass that sucks real bad. <laughs> like, all that stuff sucks real bad. We all get that, right? But nothing compared yeah. to these constant decisions you had to make. Like, hey, you want to keep your leg? Hey, you want to keep the rest of your leg? Right. You know what I mean? Not none of that. I'm sorry. I, I to all the wrestling people who are, are cuckoo for cocoa puffs about how hard wrestling is. Right? What you went through is far harder than what the sport of wrestling could ever throw at someone. Right? That's just my opinion. Um, there's a girl. Uh, I just think, yeah. I just, well, I, I just I mean, think it gives you the you know. The, the discipline to move forward and right. the, you know the you had the foundation you, know, I think that's, you had the foundation to fight how you were able to fight i got i guess is what we could say you had the you had a great foundation to survive yeah. in, in this 0.001% situation that you survived and now you're thriving right like it's crazy to me i i never knew yeah that there was gray matter i didn't realize there was brains coming out of your ears i never heard that part right like i'm always listening i'm trying to find new things right yeah i remember like always wanting to hear details, yeah. right? And not as like a, 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 a lunatic, right? Or a, a, a person who's morbid, but like, I remember always just wanting to hear the details. Like, I remember like so, something like the catalytic converter or something was what burned your leg, right? What what burned your leg? Uh, so the my car actually flipped over and I think I think the fluids that were, were dripping down caught on fire and it may have been through the catalytic converter, something like that, but that's that's what happened. And I have and it just so happened that, you know, a heroic off duty police officer, you know, was was in the area at the time, busted the window out, drugged me out of a tiny, tiny spot in my car. You know, just this it was crazy. All these tiny little things had to happen in order for me to, to even have a shot of even getting to the hospital. It was terrible weather that day. So when they took me out of the car, they, they took me uh, to where the old elementary school was there in Rosewood. And the weather was so bad, they didn't think they were going to be able to get care flight out. And then I know that my family was all around uh, the ambulance when they got there. And I was in there forever, you know, and they, and they couldn't figure out what was going on or if I was going to make it out of that. Well, what was happening was I was fighting them in there. They couldn't get me, they, they couldn't get me, keep me down. Uh, even with, I had, you know, I had broken bones and my legs, both my legs were broken. My, I had bone popping out of my leg at the same oh time. So it was like, you know, I had this, I had this fight to live and it was just crazy of all these things that had to happen. You know, somebody had to be there in the right spot. The weather had to break just in time. Um, you know, there was just enough, uh, just enough room between, you know, the, uh, the armrest and and the door for me to, you know, if you saw my car today of just how little space that they were able to pull me out of, I mean, just, and, and that's what we, we still have my car and I, and I've shown my kids just to be like, you know, this is how lucky, you know, I am to still just be here today, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's surreal and you got to remind yourself of, of where you've come from and how far you've come, you know, that's, you know, so the, the story is, you know, I love to tell it because the story is really cool. And, um, you know, just so many people to thank the, the Rosewood Fire Department. That was that was a part of that, you know, that, you know, and I know that made a huge impact on their lives, too. You know, this that accident impacted so many other people besides just myself, you know, even on that day and and beyond. You know, kids see me walking around with a prosthetic leg now and it's you know, it's not it's not different anymore. You know, they think it's pretty cool to to see a guy walking around and, you know, being able to tell that story. I think how you've lived your life is like the real thing. that's super validating to people. I think that how, what you've taken and done with it, this tragic event 
and how you've spun it into you're running a school district, right? You know, there's five board, uh, there's five people you answer to. They're, they're elected officials, right? The board of education. The fact that you know they at least three of them saw like fit that a guy who was in this crazy accident, he's an amputee, had gray matter coming out of his ears, that that he's the, the direction to run a school district, which he came up uh, through. So I think how you live your life is the real testament beyond what we're talking about. You got through these, you navigated some really awful waters, right? And and, and to how, how you've come out on top, I think that's the most amazing thing to me, right? Like when I just keep like, it, it's so incredible to me because I got a front row seat to like seeing it, interacting with you usually every two, three months, right? And it, it's just an incredible thing. It's, it's a miracle, like you said, like a 0.001%. And then, you know, my friendship with the Knowles and obviously your cousin, Benzman. <laughs> These people, you know, that we've, you know, it's one of these things where um, you don't see them, don't talk to them for years. And then all of a sudden you see them and it's just like, boom, nothing's changed. Um, you're not the superintendent at Graham. I'm not a guy who's been teaching 20 plus years. These things that, you know, it's like, uh, it's like you never miss a beat. Right. And it's like an awesome thing. And I love it. But I think the big testament that I think a lot of the people in your area, I can't speak for them, but for me, at least is how you've lived your life what you've taken and done with your second chance. Most people don't take their second chance like you did and, and run with the ball. They, they just don't do it. I appreciate it. It's just, I've been really fortunate. I've had a lot of, um, you know, being able to take advantage of opportunities when they're in front of me, you know, and a lot of people pushing for me and, um, you know, education was always something that I was pretty passionate about, but it was one of those things you just, I didn't follow right away. Um, you know, working with kids, I teach in first and third grade and be able to work with, with kids and, you know, especially first grade, teach them how to read and relating some real life stories, you know, while we were going through it, you know, and some of my trials and tribulations and joking about it, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things I have. I can, you know, I can laugh about a situation and, you know, make some people feel better about, you know, something that could be an awkward awkward situation to begin with. So I think that that's helped on a lot of fronts, but I'm just, you know, been really fortunate to, to have these opportunities and take advantage of them and, and have a lot of people that support me along the way, you know, and that's, and that's something that, that I'll always value. And, you know, hopefully people feel I'm the same as I was, you know, while I was teaching first grade, now that I'm still leading a school district. My big thing is I always ask, always ask people, like you'll periodically see it probably one out of every five or 10 interviews. Whenever I talk to an older wrestler, my big thing is always like, can you still wrestle? How's your body? How's your body? You good? Any joints? Need any joints replaced? Right? Like, right. And, and that's done through 40, 50 years, 30 years, 25 years, whatever years of wrestling, right? How is your body? How, how are your joints? How is your, your jaw, your face, your legs? How is your body, your liver? How intact are you? And, and are, are you like, are, are you like immune compromised because you know, you had pneumonia, you had this traumatic thing happening right how are you are you healthy like a regular person who didn't get hit by a locomotive yeah, you know what's you know what's awesome I, I am you know for you know for the most part besides you know as far as docs checking me out you know and besides having you know 40 41 year old heartburn on a frequent basis um but other than that i'm i'm healthy you know as as i would have been if i didn't get hit by a train now like between wrestling and, you know, getting hit by the train, my joints, my knees, they, I mean, my knees hurt, you know, pretty constantly it takes, you know, a good 10 or 15 minutes in the morning to get up and uh, get the, get the grease moving in them a little bit. feel like uh, the 10 man where I got to oil them up a, a little bit, but I, I try to still work out every day, you know, between either doing, you know, pull-ups, um, you know, free weights, things like that, just to keep, keep in, try to keep in decent shape. Um, knowing that, you know, I did go through something like that, that, you know, I don't want to let my body go. And, um, you know, cause that's something you do, you are concerned about. You take a traumatic event like that. You want to live as, as long as you possibly can. So, um, you know, I, I hit the doctor up every year, uh, for checkups, do the same thing, but, you know, you know, I'll talk to them about different pains I have and things like that. And usually it comes back to, Hey, you're, you're over 40 and you got hit by a train. It's a, it's a pretty, I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty good excuse to explain a lot of the phantom pains that you may have. Um, the other thing is, you know, we're in the holds of this like awful opioid addiction pain, you know, pain medication, right? 
how do you like avoid not going down that road? How I mean, that is just like, that's gotten so many people, right? Like you're a guy who you got every reason, right? You got every reason to go down that road. Did you ever get to a point where you had to like push back from whatever the pain medication they were giving you? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was hard to, and it never got too much because I had really good doctors in there that, that were trying to educate you at the same time and then still pushing you to be like, Hey, ibuprofen is going to do a lot for you at the same time, you know, and, and, you know, seeing those things and knowing some of that before of what happens to people, um, you know, and I think, you know, everybody's body reacts a little bit differently. So mine just wasn't one that as soon as they, you know, cause I was on it when, you know, in the hospital and things like that, but it wasn't something like you couldn't stop doing. So it was, my body didn't, you know, get used to taking something like that. And it wasn't like something that was hard to stop when it was now, you know, I've had some other surgeries since then and things like that where you need it and things like that, but it's never anything that, that isn't outside of a, a prescribed uh, amount or, or need while you're getting through something. It's wild because you know, that, you know, people have had lot, a lot less, right. They've had not their leg amputated, not hit by a train who, you know, it's it, cause it's just, it's a monster, right? What it does to them does to your brain chemistry yeah. and how your body and it, and it blocks pain. Right. And it's just, it's just, it's crazy to me to think about it. And, and the fact that, you know, you've been able to do what you do is just, it's incredible. I think about like from all these different angles, I'm like, it's really incredible. But, um, so let's talk about your third chance. You want to talk about your third chance, your wife, right? You meet your wife. Yeah. And, um, you have a family. Yeah. Uh, listen, you had a family yeah, absolutely. where I had a family. I'm like, wait a minute. How's the dude who's younger than me that got hit by the <laughs> train uh, having a family before me? What am I doing here? What's going on, Zeb? Right? The the urgency started to hit me. But let's talk about your third chance where you met your wife. Yeah, so it, it was interesting. So we, uh, you know, we had, we have a show pig farm. Uh, we had uh, a girl that kept her pigs out of our farm in the summer. Um, she said, hey, you really need to meet uh, my aunt's relation kind of, you know, but it wasn't by marriage or anything like that. And so they kept putting it off and talking about, Hey, you need to meet this girl. She's going to go be a nurse. Uh, and it was one of those, those fair, uh, first encounter meetings. She came to the Champaign County fair, um, and, you know, found me in, in one of the barns. It's a, you know, she, she wasn't a fair girl or anything like that. And first she made an excuse not to, not to come, or maybe she wasn't going to follow it back up. And then, um, we, we ended up going on, you know, one date after that, the first date I took her and showed her all these, the pictures from my accident. And, um, you know, the, they used to take pictures of my burns every week or my stomach that was kind of cut open to let my, all the healing done. So I took her to my mom's house and she went through and looked at all, all my gross and gory things. And I think it was kind of hooked and love at first sight from there. I ended up going and speaking to her nursing class uh, about burns and, and what it's like to be a patient in a burn unit. Um, you know, and we've, we started seeing each other there and, you know, we've kind of been together ever since, you know, we're, I'm fortunate now I have a, a 12 year old boy, uh, Cade and an 11 year old girl, Ayla. I couldn't be more proud of both of them. You know, they're, um, you know, they're the, some of the favorite, or they are my favorite things I've ever done, you know, to, and, you know, something I'm so proud of each and every day, you know, again, I'm so fortunate with multiple things that have happened in my life. And, you know, those are at the top of the list. Okay. Let's, we got to chalk another one up <laughs> for the Champaign County Fair. It wins again. We got to chalk another one up to pig farming. Always. Right. So the two for two. And then I, I, this one, um, I started showing her, all the pictures of my accident and the gory injuries I had. I've never heard that one. So we're going to give that one. It's yeah. first, it's first chalk. We're going to go chalk that one up to, um, traumatic injuries, I guess. Best pickup line. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was love at no, first sight. It worked for you, right? It worked for you, but, um, okay. Here's my Champaign County story. Champaign County fair story. I remember Noel saying, yeah, we're going to go see Mark at the pig barn. And I'm like, we're working for Jeff Jordan. And I was like, all right. And I remember like we worked out and wrestled that day. And it was like the Thursday. And it was like Brumfield was there. I think Irwin was there. I think Ty Morgan was even around. And like, yeah, we're going to go. I don't know if those guys came with us. But I know that Noel and I went, Justin Noel, 
we went to the Champaign County Fair, and I remember Justin Null <laughs> wore his Adidas teal shoes. He wore his wrestling shoes through all the like livestock barns. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, these are sweet. What are you talking about? I love these shoes. And he wore his he wore his wrestling shoes. Not like he like showered and had like shorts and a t-shirt on and wrestling shoes. And that was how we went to the Champaign County Fair, went through all the bar, barns, went and saw Mark showing pigs. And I was like, wow, these guys are different. These guys are different. Hey, he's got style. You know that uh, about Nala. He's got style. He sure does. He's a different guy. Um, okay, so your son now wrestles. Your 12-year-old son wrestles. I saw him at OAC grade school state duels. Graham won. Of course, Graham won. Yes. Of course they won. How did he perform um, on the weekend uh, on Saturday? Because you, you just know I can't follow all of it. I'm sorry. How did he do? No, you're good. He was uh, he ended up going four and one on the day. Uh, he got caught rolling through on on one of those matches, but you know it was probably one of his better weekends he's had so far. Uh, he's been training really hard. Um, you know, Coach Breslin was there coaching coaching the team since Coach Obach couldn't be there. So Coach Breslin's got a a six year old too. That's a that's a stud that you know him and Cade work out together uh, every day after the middle school practice. They do their own kind of sixth grade practice. Um, so he's really, really turned it on this year, and I've been, I've been really proud of him. So I think, I think it's going to be a really fun year for him of growth. You know, he's, you know, he's one of those ones that's going to just take some time to, time to get there. And I can see him really coming into his own as he's, you know, works his way into high school. You know, I don't pressure or push anything. Um, you know, or you know, you know, we know that. You know, I talked to him. We're not handing out any college scholarships in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade. So. Um, you know, we're just out there trying to get better every week. Um, he plays, he plays football. He plays, you know, he plays baseball too. So he's kind of a multi-sport kind of kid and he loves showing pigs. So, um, you know, I know I, I talk to him all the time. Wrestling makes you a better human. So, and that's, and that's what we're, that's what we're all about being good sports. Um, you know, coming out there and giving everything you have, but it was a good weekend. That's really good. Actually. That's Taking first overall in D2. Um, a great yeah, it was it was fun to follow. I was running. Four, four, yeah, I, I was back. Four I was back in actually London running running. Four and yeah, one. four and one. Four and one, right? So so you look at that uh, right? one hundred pounds. What's say it again? Yeah. I missed that part. He was four and one at hundred pounds. Oh, okay. So listen, yeah, hundred pounds. He was at. That tournament is super tough, right? OAC, and then they had a national level event the next day, uh, defensive duels. So they stacked them back to back. There were some kids who went ten and zero, nine and one, eight and two, and I'm like, I, when I see someone go four and one at that event, like I know your kid's legit now, right? But here's the big thing: I I've actually taught, discussed it with people. You guys have had situations before at St. Paris Graham, where kids have moved in out of state, right? Right, like, so David Taylor came from Wyoming, right? You've had a lot of guys move in from out of state. The Castle brothers moved from California, right? It's a draw. It's a natural magnetic draw. Do you ever think to yourself, man, my kid might get knocked out of the lineup because a kid who goes to Jordan's camps moves in to Russell at St. Paris Grimm. Do you ever think about that? I mean, you're the superintendent of the school. You're a graduate. You're an alum. Your kid wrestles for him. I mean, you're so the most probably the most heavily invested person in the entire school district, arguably, right? We can say that from birth to you know cradle to the grave, right? That's you. Do you ever think about that? You ever like, man, he, if, is he ever gonna, you know? Because that that almost happened to you. I'm guessing. I'm guessing some guys came over and you were probably in that situation too. Do you think about that at all? You know, I I think about it, but it's all about you know you know, bringing good people in only makes you better, you know, so either you're going to, you're going to rise, rise to the top, or you're going to find another weight that fits you, you know, and that's what you just got to wrestle the guys that are around you. If you want, if you don't want to wrestle the best, you're probably going to go look somewhere else, regardless, it's going to make you better. Um, it, it might take you more years to get varsity and, um, you know, you might, maybe you're not going to be varsity. And I've had this conversation until maybe junior or senior year. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, we've talked about it. We see it, you know, the, those things happen, but I've talked to him about, you know, just 
get better, go in the room, work on what you need to work on. You know, it's going to take time to grow and everybody gets it at different times. So the guys that are coming in, that's good. They're going to come in and make you better. So, but yeah, I mean, those are real issues. Then those things happen, but sometimes you got to cut a little bit more weight or maybe bump up just to, just to get that spot or just go out and win that wrestle off. Has being the superintendent of Graham local schools been all you thought it would be? Did you catch that? You know, I've, you know, it's, it really has been an honor to be, to be superintendent. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to, to grow up in this area and another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, about being superintendent. Yeah. You still there, Zeb? Yep. Yes, sir. You there? Yep. Okay. You're, you're starting to buffer a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're having a little delay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I, I've, it's been an honor to serve as the, as a superintendent, you know, it has been. Yeah. You let me go on the superintendent question still. Yeah, keep going. Keep talking about being a superintendent. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so absolutely. It's been, it's been everything I thought it would be, you know, just because I know the area, you know, I know the people, I think people feel comfortable coming to talk to me, you know, good or bad, you know, they're able to come and, and share their thoughts and feelings for, with, with the district. And they know, they know I want the very best for the district and, and you know, that I'm gonna do everything I can for, for every single student in the district and everything I can to fight for the community. Um, you know, I, I strongly believe in public education. Um, I believe that, you know, there's something about where we live that and the community that we have that's amazing, um, you know, and it's, it's something that, you know, that, that I think is really good and special for the kids around here. And, you know, I'm going to continue to, to fight to provide them as many opportunities as possible. Um, you know, it gets into school funding and funding formulas from the state and, you know, um, you know, multiple mandates that are handed down or things that aren't fun with, with education necessarily, but somebody has got to be in that position to, to help coordinate all of that. And, um, to shed as much junk as we can from teachers and um, to, to make sure we're, we're moving things from out of their way so they can do the things they're really good at, you know, and teach and work with kids. Um, you know, I really care about our staff and, um, and that's something that, that I fight and strive to do. And, you know, and I think, I think they know that and they can see that, that, you know, they have a, a superintendent and that's sitting in that seat that, you know, that's going to do every single, everything that he can do every day to, to make it the best that, they possibly can with what they have so yeah it's been it's been great from you know just because i'm from here you know and you know that comes with its own challenges at the same time but you know it's the the positives definitely outweigh the negatives okay we have a big duel coming up right big duel at the cavalli center bishop mccord out of pennsylvania versus st paris graham can you start giving me how this came to be and then we can go into a little preview of uh, of what matches you want to see yeah. So, I mean, there, and I'm still, I'm still iffy or, uh, you know, there's bits and pieces. I don't know exactly how this ended up coming to be somehow. Um, somebody was dating somebody that was on the cheerleading squad or knew somebody that between there's connections between McCourt and Graham, you know, outside of being really good wrestling schools that, you know, there there's, there's, outside connections in there somewhere that helped make this happen. You know, that we, we knew that there had to be something on the books that to make an event like this happen, but you got to have people that care about, you know, wrestling, but you also have to, to know people that can talk to the right people um, to get us there. So, um, you know, I think it, somehow it got back to our AD and said, Hey, look, we really want to make this happen at Cavelli. Um, and my AD, um, Tom came to me and I said, yeah, this, we have to make this work. What a, what an amazing opportunity for our kids. Um, so it's been something that's come really quick and the planning has been really fast and, uh, we put it together. I mean, you know, probably the most famous sophomore wrestler in the, in the nation will be coming in to wrestle Graham, you know? So I think that that's pretty special. And, you know, we're bringing a lot of kids that, they're going to come in and grind and do everything they can to bring home the W. 
Okay, so you guys will be wrestling at, uh, at the Cavalli, where the Ohio State University wrestles their home duels. Um, you guys will be taking on Bishop McCourt out of Pennsylvania. They're they're out of PIAA jail, if you didn't know, and they will be able to win a Pennsylvania State title this year. Um, this is a dual meet. This is not a tournament. Dual meets are not all about top end. They probably have what we know. They have more top end than you, but you guys got a shot in a duel. Um, we obviously know Bull Bassett at 144, whatever they decide to do with him, or at 138. Um, you have a state champion at – you have Cramblet. Who are all your state champions at Grand? You have Cramblet. You have Talker. Who are all okay. your – uh, Eli Jax is 157. He was a runner-up last year. Uh, we got Hayden Hughes. He was a runner-up. He'll be at 138. He's already wrestled wrestled Bo this year. We got some junior high state runner-ups. We got a heavyweight. Wyatt, he was a runner-up. Um, and then we have Blaine DeMarco. He was a, a middle school runner-up. But then – um, you know, we got some, we got some guys that, you know, we got Chet Manier at 190. He was just four and two at Ironman lost in the blood round, you know? So, I mean, we got, we got some guys that are going to come in there and wrestle, wrestle hard, you know, um, Jake Landis, one of six, he, he took six last year at, at the state tournament. Um, you know, so I think, you know, we got some guys that are going to be ready to come wrestle, you know, and I know their top ends great and, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, that, that cliche goes goes way back, um, and we've we've already seen McCourt, you know, two times already um, in the past few weeks. So you know we have, um, you know, Bryce Kohler. He's wrestled Owen uh, McMullen twice. You know, and I think it's been a three or four point uh, loss each time. So you know this could be the time that, that we come up and uh, get him back on this one. So two Ironman placers will be wrestling prior marquee matchup if it happens. Uh, Melvin Miller versus Brogan Tucker, correct? Yep. yep. So that, that's probably yeah, the so they one. Brogan wrestled uh, wrestled him. Yeah. Uh, Brogan wrestled him at Super 32, um, and he lost 11 to 3, and then he wrestled him again at Ironman and lost 4 to 3. So, um, you know, I think – I think I hope to see that match there uh, at the same time. And then Kohler, uh, he was third last year at state and, you know, coming back. And I think those are two of the premier matchups that, that we can see coming into this weekend. I mean, it's two excellence, you know, just storied, you know, programs or wrestlers that are going together. I mean, Graham coming in, we're, we're 22 state uh, titles in Ohio. Um, you know, so I think we bring in uh, a lot of, of, tradition and excellence behind something that we can do moving forward with, with McCourt. 22 years in a row minus the COVID year, correct? Yeah. Minus the COVID year. Um, you know, obviously we would have won that year as well. <laughs> Woo! I love the confidence on you. I love it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Talk about the duel a little, a little bit. There's going to be free admission. It's on Thursday, December 21st. PA Power Wrestling is going to be broadcasting it. What other details am I missing? I said free admission, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're 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 buffering a little bit there on me. So I I, I got a mission on there. So I I'd be uh, remiss to say it is a free event. So we're hoping to pack the house. Um, it, it's absolutely free. There will be donations taken at the door. Um, you know, we're gonna start wrestling at uh, four o'clock with the middle school, and then we're rec we're gonna have senior night for Graham. We'll recognize our seniors after the the middle school duel. And then we'll start the the McCourt Graham duel at uh, at five five thirty ish five ten five thirty, um, but it is free free entry. We're going to sell fifty fifty. We're making it a a huge deal. Um, you know, it is you know, Coach Jordan is sponsoring that with his with his camps. It's uh, you know referred to as the Jordan trained holiday duel is what we're going to be uh, experiencing. So they could start a new tradition in Ohio, the Jordan trained holiday duel. Could be a thing every year, and I'm guessing it will be Graham and a rotating opponent, maybe. I 
hopeful for now. I would think that we would go back and, and wrestle McCord again. Um, you know, and, and it would be nice to to pair up with a, an Ohio State d- duel at the same time, either so we could wrestle before them. Um, you know, for getting our our middle school kids and our high school kids to wrestle in the Cavelli Center. I mean, I don't think there's a better wrestling venue in, in the nation. Um, you know, so anybody coming in to wrestle and something like that's going to be be pretty special. You know, and then we're going to be able to hopefully really pack that house. You know, being free. I love it. Well, listen, we're going to talk again this time, uh, sometime this week, maybe tomorrow. Um, see how we how things come out for us tonight, and um, I'll get back with you tomorrow and let you know how we're doing here, how our production went, and uh, we're going to let people know this is a free duel and that we're going to be there on. Uh, Thursday, December 21st, 5 o'clock at the Cavalli Center in Columbus, Ohio. St. Paris Graham taking on Bishop McCord out of Pennsylvania, and it should be a good one. Um, Stick around for a little bit, and I'm going to check and see how we did on our our feed here. Chad, thank you for the time. Okay, and, uh, man, I just appreciate you. I'm glad you're still here. I'm glad you're still here. You got me fired up. Okay, Uh, go Falcons, go Crushers. Everybody wins.